I want to ask Aaron Zittner right now about the Wall Street Journal poll about the president and his relation to the economy and people's perception of him in, hands, in terms of handling the economy. How much of that do you suspect is rooted in interest on credit card rates. That's something that every American pays every month for fear of losing their card. That's the impact of the economy that I think they see most often, other than grocery prices. Yeah, and uh, uh, mortgage rates, uh, too, have been a problem. Inflation has just been so corrosive and in interest rates, and it's pervasive and affected everybody. But we've had this mystery uh, about the economy, which is, through traditional measures, unemployment, uh, uh, inflation, the stock market, consumer spending is high. The economy is pretty good, but people aren't feeling it. And the question for the presidential campaign has been, will people start to feel that the economy is strong and move more in line with the economic fundamentals? And will Biden get any credit? And what we're seeing in our poll is, yeah, Biden's getting a little more credit. People are uh, viewing his handling of the economy a little better. But boy, he's got age, immigration, and other issues that are just weighing him down. And uh, it's not enough. This improvement in economic uh, sentiment, consumer sentiment, just isn't enough to give him much lift so far. Yeah, Adrian, there's no question that uh, President Biden faces a number of challenges for his reelection bid, including two hot wars overseas, at least one of which in particular, uh, the one in Gaza, is dragging down his support, at least among pieces of his base. But you know this as well as I do. The Biden team frames it differently. They see the poll numbers, but they don't think the poll numbers are going to be reflective of how people vote in November. We've seen that overseas uh, with other leaders of democracies, and they think it'll happen again here, too. And even though these polls are worrisome, since the Dobbs decision, Democrats win elections. They keep yep. winning elections. Now, this will be the first time since the Dobbs decision that President Biden will name will be on the ballot. So talk to us about how that framing needs to occur in the next few months. Well, a couple of things, Jonathan. I think, you know, number one, we have to keep in mind that every time that Donald Trump's name has been on the ballot, every time that he has been part of an election, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, he has lost. 2022, even the, the repercussions of Donald Trump's presidency uh, were, were looming around, and the, the threat of him running again was looming around, and Democrats have consistently won um, in very tough elections. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Of course, you also saw New York 3, which I think gave Democrats a major boost because we saw. Uh, you know, how the Democrat in that race was able to run offensively on immigration, was able to really tout the strong economy, that yes, perhaps not everyone is feeling it. They are, the con consumer confidence is going up. Um, and, and so you're able to sort of take the economy, you know, take it head on, talk about it, and also run offensively on immigration. But look, I'm going to tell you this. My money's on the guy that's created 15 million jobs and counting as president, who passed four major economic bills, two of those bipartisan, who's overseen record wage growth, who capped insulin at $35. The list of Biden's accomplishments goes long and wide, far and wide. You compare that to Donald Trump, the madman, who, frankly, we just have not been hearing a lot from over the past few years. I think as this election heats up, it does become a binary choice as we move into the general election between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, and you start hearing Trump on the stump making all these crazy comments and gaffes, such as the ones that you played this past weekend. And then you also see for the Biden campaign, which, by the way, is raising a lot more money than Donald Trump's campaign, as Donald Trump is spending a lot of money that he's raising on his legal bills. The Biden campaign is going to have a major cash advantage going into the real time where it makes a big difference to be spending more money on the ads, your persuasive um, ads, and, and making sure that you're getting the message out in terms of what you've done and what you will continue to do for the American people. I think once the summer hits, people are tuning in more. Uh, we're spending more money on the Biden campaign. The Biden campaign is spending more money. It's going to be a, a far closer race, and the polls are going to start to reflect that. Aaron, when you look at the uh, question about the president's approval rating on the economy, people saying that things are getting better, do you have a sense of what's in people's minds when they judge the president on policy? I mean, what I hear anecdotally, you know, if you work in the political ecosystem, you think the Inflation Reduction Act and you think the American Recovery Act, but if you're a normal person, you look at interest rates, which people don't understand that that's made by the Fed Reserve and that he doesn't, that he doesn't have a, a role in that. You look at credit card um, uh, interest rates, you look at... Um, and, and inflation, which people assume is some sort of byproduct of a Biden policy. What do you think is, do you have any sense of what people are actually thinking of when they're, when they're judging him on, the, on his economic performance? 
Well, look, this is the strongest job market by many measures since the 1960s. Uh, gas is about three bucks a gallon before it was four dollars a gallon. I think people take clues from their daily lives and uh, and we see some improvement in how they view the president's uh, handling of the economy. About 40 percent approve of how he's handling the economy. Uh, the share who think he's doing a good job on inflation has come up. But these are not numbers that say, hey, this is a great economy. Thank you, Mr. President. We have to reelect you right away. Joe and Amika, let me give you one other number from the poll, and that's 52 percent. That's the share of Americans who think Donald Trump is too old to be running for president. And this speaks to some of the clips you were showing. That 52 percent is well below the number who think Joe Biden is too old to run for president. He's at 73 percent of people saying, what is this guy doing at age 81 running? But that 52 percent is up five points from December. So what we're going to watch mm, in the future is, as you guys show more of these clips and they are out in the media, will more and more people come to think that uh, age is as big a millstone uh, in reelecting Donald Trump as it is for Joe Biden. Reporter and editor at the Wall Street Journal, Aaron Zittner, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. We appreciate it. And